Hey everyone, Rob here, and I know it's been a little while since I posted a video. Things have calmed down quite a bit at Fagros Fath, and uh, I kind of always want to wait for some information rather than just rambling on. But now we have Grimsvath, and a lot of big developments have happened regarding this volcano system over the past few days, uh, and even the past few months, to be quite honest, that I think it's time that we start taking a closer look and perhaps updating you guys a little bit more frequently on what could potentially be an eruption in the very near future. So what we're looking at is from the 2011 eruption and uh, not to brag too much, but four months ago, I did say that uh, we are, we should be looking at this volcano system because it, it came onto my radar around four or five months ago. I know a lot of you people that subscribe to the channel or, you know, watch the, that video. And um, so now here we are. We are at a time. Let me show you where it is. As I'm sort of going off on it. A time where this volcano system could be erupting and the scientific council is keeping an eye on it. Now, a little bit of background on this. So this volcanic system is the most active in Iceland. And the last eruption occurred in 2011, which is part of that video that you just saw. It's located here in the Vatnajoko Park, so it's underneath this sort of glacial area, quite a bit away from the capital of Reykjavik and the airport, which is kind of on the other side of the country. Now, it does consist of a central volcano and fissure swarm, and it's around 100 kilometers long and 18 kilometers wide. Now, it is partly covered, as you can see on the satellite, it's covered by up to 700 meter thick ice. So... It's quite, it's quite under there, and uh, that's partly also why, if we go back to those, the video, you get a lot of this ash cloud going up. It's because of going through all of that ice. Now, the reason that we're talking about it now is the Scientific Council and the news and all the measurements they're taking, they're saying that there's every indication that this Grimsworth volcanic system underneath the ice cap of the Vatnajökull glacier is ready to erupt. And they are measuring deformation in the levels of the ice. Now, data obtained through GPS station on top of the glacier, which they've set up quite a while ago, shows that the ice cap over Grimsbutton continues to inflate. And it's mainly because meltwater flows into the lakes. Now, they're saying, too, that there's a second GPS station nearby on a cliff in Grimsbutton Mountain, southeast of Grimsbutton. Uh, and has res registered inflation as well, which they're saying is due to the magma accumulation there. Now, this area has already, since I think about a year ago or so, when they first started noticing this fluctuation, um, the flight code was yellow, so it's sort of be careful when you're flying over it kind of thing. Uh, but you can see you can see it here, and you can see kind of the volcanic systems through ice. And so it is in line with what what we know of in terms of where the volcanoes are in Iceland. Now, this map's not updated. As you can see, there's this red triangle. We should have one down here near Reykjavik because we had that Fagrosvath volcano very, very recently. But, um, yeah, so back to Grimsvath. So if we look back, take a look at some of these images. Last year, the inflation in Grimsfjall mountain had reached the same level as prior to the last eruption, which we're looking at here, which occurred in 2011. So for that reason, they issued a yellow color code for the aviation, like I said, over the volcanic system uh, last September. Now, what they're saying is different now is that compared to the last eruption, let's jump over to some of these other ones. Here we have some ash formations from the last eruption. But compared to the last eruption, um, is that the surface of the lakes is higher than it had been for a long time. So once the glacial flooding actually occurs, which they're expecting could be tomorrow, it could be in a week, I mean, it's going to happen very, very soon, a sudden drop of pressure will take place, and typically, not always, but typically, that triggers an eruption. So we are looking at something that could happen very, very soon. Because that's what happened during the eruption prior to the most recent one. And... Uh, Typically, you know, they're saying that that typically happens. So seismic activity has been generally increasing, uh, not enough to report anything, 
But this is a big enough deal that on the meteorological website, you can go here, it's V-E-D-U-R.is, so it's weather.is, and they're posting continuous updates on what's going on in terms of the measurements, what the scientific council is doing, and the rate that things are changing. So a quick summary on all this text is that very, very quickly, over you know past couple days, so you can see the ice shelf in Grimsbot has sunk by almost 60 centimeters in just the past couple days, and they updated that on the 24th of November at 4.30. And then the next day in the morning, they said that it had sunk about 25 centimeters since 10 the, the morning prior. So it's it's quite a bit, and they're not sure exactly what's going on. I mean, but there is changes going on, electrical connectivity happening, some gases that they're registering and, and things like that. But it's uh, it's definitely something that could happen very, very soon. You can see some of these pictures definitely showcase the sheer power of this one versus what we had seen on some of the prior ones. But uh, yeah, I thought I would do a quick video on this. I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen tomorrow. I feel like this is something that's going to really pop up. And hopefully it doesn't, hopefully it's like factors felt where we don't get this huge ash cloud or does like, you know, threatening people or destroying bridges, because this is the kind of thing that has happened before, especially, I mean, if you think about the glacial lagoon, there's a lot of glacial sort of areas here and rivers and they have big bridges. And uh, previously these types of glacial floods have destroyed bridges. So I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, Things are pretty calm. It looks like it will erupt. I mean, historically, this is kind of what happens prior. So whether it's going to happen soon or maybe a couple of months or a couple of years, who knows? But everything's pointing to this is going to be the next big eruption in Iceland. We had Bagdusfeld, and that was for 2021. We need we need something new and fresh for 2022, I guess. And uh, this one is the one that's going to happen. And hopefully the ash cloud does not go too crazy, although... They are saying the buildup is more intense than it has been previously. So we'll just have to keep an eye and see what happens. Hopefully, it's all nice and safe. But until next time, I'm always going to be updating you on the most relevant stuff. And uh, it was a lot of information. I'll put some links in if you want to take a look at some information on this volcanic system. A lot of you probably know of it, about it just if you follow volcanoes in general. Uh, or if you have looked up Iceland volcanoes, this one has probably come up quite a bit. And you can see here from these pictures, it uh, it does have quite a bit of a more aggressive character, shall we say, than Fagosfeld. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to updating you with more as soon as it becomes available. So be sure to like the video and subscribe so you get all of the updates. Until next time, thanks so much.